idcwoodcraft.com. Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft, your CNC router bit supply company. If you are looking to make a really, really simple project that people will really like, then I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. One of the simplest CNC projects on the planet that you can make. And it's this. People's names. Simply carving their names on a piece of wood, painting it up a little bit, and giving it a nice finish. And people like this kind of stuff. I've made John here, Jennifer, Elizabeth, and a lot of people ask me, can you do a video to make this? So I'm going to show you how to make this. But the first thing I want to share with you is this is a project that is very quick to make and people will buy it. And the reason they'll buy it is because it is their name. People, the, the most important word on the planet is somebody's name. And if you can go to a show or something like that and actually bring your CNC router and carve these things out, people will buy them just to watch it being carved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into my design software, show you how quick and easy it is to design this up, regardless of which design software you have, and then how to set up on our long mill here, which is the CNC router that I recommend, and we're going to carve it out. This will be knocked out in no time flat. So we're going to get into the Vectric software right now, which is the software that I use, and I'll design it up. The first thing we need to do is know what size material we're going to work with. And I'd just recommend something like this. This is three and a half inches by however long you need it to be for the name. So I'll show you exactly how we set that up. But just go with a small piece of wood about this size. Here's the beauty of this thing, by the way. You just can set it right there. It's that simple. They can set it on a piece of furniture, whatever, hang it on the door, put a little string on it, and hang it on the wall. People just love their names. You can do John and Jennifer. Right? For a couple, delete it up. All right, let's get into the Vectric software and we'll whip this thing up. So I'm in the Vectric design software now. And I've got this little project whipped up. But first of all, we just need to set up the project size. You want to make sure the size is set up. We're going to go with, uh, I've got my size set up. It's 3.7 inches tall, which is showing up right here. And I have 10 inches wide set up, but that doesn't matter right now. We're going to change that as we need. So I'm going to simply say OK and stay with that size. Now we've got to come up with a name that we're going to do. And I'm going to pick the name Julianne. Julianne is the girl that is our, uh, the IDC Woodcraft uh, Administrative Coordinator. So it'll be a little present for her. So we're going to get into the software and we are going to go straight into text which is under the Create Vectors area, under the text, we will take this one right here. Now I take that back. We need to create a rectangle first. So we're going to go over Rectangle and open that up. We're going to ignore everything we have here and simply create a rectangle over the project material size from the upper left corner or any corner you want. And we're going to go across the, the other corner diagonal and release it. So in the software right now, I can see that we have a rectangle created on the material. And that's all we want. So we're going to close that. And now we'll go to the Create Vectors, and down to where the text function is. And that's the little T's. We're going to go into the second one. And that is Draw Text Within a Vector Box, which is the box that we just created. What this function will do is when we start to type in text, it's actually going to center it right to that box. So we are going to click that T and we're going to select our font to whatever we want to be. Now a lot of people like this one that I've been using called Velveeta. It's way down the list so I'm going to click the V to find it and it's Vivalda. V-I-V-A-L-D-I. I'm going to select that and you'll see why it's so cool. So now we're going to go into the text box up here, click, and simply type in the name, Julianne. And that's it. We've got her name listed in here. Now the font is not the exact font I want. Um, there we are. We're going to go with Edwardian script. That one I like a little bit better. But you can see now that it has centered the font right on that project because it's centering in the box. So we're going to close that. 
And now I can adjust this font ever or however I want to. So I want it to be a little bit bigger on the project material. So I'm simply going to click that anywhere on Julianne again. And I'm going to hold the shift button down. And then I'm going to grab one of the beads. We're going to grab the upper left hand bead and just drag out. Now the reason we're holding the shift button down is because we are changing the size of this. When we grab that upper bead, we can change the size. The shift button makes it so I can change the size from the center of the name in the Vectric software. So you can see it's, it's expanding and shrinking based on the center. So I'm just going to drag it up a little bit and now we have it. And that is actually going to fit this 10 inch piece of material. So we were simply going to rock and roll with that. And that, my CNC brother or sister, the design is done. <laughs> it's that simple. Now let's get into the tool path and carve this thing up to create the G-code. So we're going to get back into the Vectric software. Go over to the tool path by clicking this little arrow button up at the upper right, upper left, I'm sorry and open up a tool path and we are going to simply do this in a V carve. So that would be in the Vectric software it'll be this little V symbol right here that I am selecting right now. I'm going to click it. The first thing we want to do is make sure our flat depth is not checked and I've explained flat depth in other videos so I'm not going to explain it here. Just make sure it's unchecked and then the tool we're going to use is the IDC Woodcraft 90 degree V bit that is three quarter inch diameter. So that's already set here. But if you don't have that, you can click the select button and find the V bit that you want. That brings up the tool database. Now, as far as the database goes, it can be any V bit that you want to use. For this kind of thing, I like the 90 degree V bit because it does most of it in one shot and you're done, especially the wide 90 degree V bit. As far as the database goes, if you don't have a database for your Vectric software, CarveCo, Fusion 360, or Carbide Create, on the IDC Woodcraft website, when you go to the menu at the top, it says Database Downloads. When you click that, and you'll see that you have come to the Database Download page. Find your database, download it, and get it into your software. And when you do, you'll see that you'll have a lot of router bits in there. Now, right now, I don't have nearly the router bits in my database because we are in the V carving function and the software is bringing up only the tools that it thinks we would be using for V carving. But we are already selected for the bit that we want. You just make sure you select the one that you want. I'm going to recommend for this type of project to use the 90 degree wide body V bit, which is the IDC Woodcraft 90 degree by three quarter V bit. And that is all you need. The only thing you need to do is make sure that the name is selected. Julianne is selected in this case. And we're going to scroll down. And we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it Julianne. And that's spelled with two N's. Calculate. And then we're going to reset. And I have another toolpath in here, so I'm going to get rid of that. That's John, so you know where that came from. That came from this one, all right? So I'm using the same program, but it's all the same, exactly how I'm doing it right now. So now we have this. I'm simply going to preview all toolpaths since I only have one toolpath, and that is what Julianne is going to look like. We are done with the design. It is that easy. You just type in a word. You go over to your toolpath, have one toolpath, that you're going to need to carve. Now we just need to take it over to the machine after we generate the G-code. So we get back into the vector software, close that, and we are simply going to go to uh, Save Toolpath. Open that up. Make sure you have the right post processor selected. Now, if you're brand new and you don't know what a post processor is, that is what actually writes the code that your CNC router is going to interpret. So. You have to have the right post processor if you're brand new. I've got a video that explains to you what the post processor is and how to find it. I will link that below in this video along with the V-bit that I'm using here. So we are going to generate that toolpath. In order to do that in the vector software, you see down at the bottom where it says toolpaths, we need to check the checkbox for the toolpaths that we want to generate. So it's Julianne. I'm checking that. And this Save Toolpaths buttons has highlighted, so I'm going to select that. 
go to the directory I want to store Julianne in, and we can see in the file name, it's already given the name Julianne, simply going to save. And that is done. So we're going to come over to the G-Sender software. Now the G-Sender software is the control software that's going to drive your CNC router. Any, any CNC router that is Arduino based will work with the G-Sender software. And I totally recommend that you use G-Sender because it is the most current, it's very user friendly, and it's got a lot of automation in the background. A lot of people like to use the UGS, and that's old and clunky and G-Sender is free. I'll link that below in the description of this video as well. I recommend that you get that and dump whatever else you're using because uh, G-Sender is actively being worked on. Okay, so we're coming into the uh, G-Sender software and I'm going to load that file. Just double click, find it, and I've double clicked it. And there it is, Julianne, that's showing the toolpath. And really, at this point, all we have to do is set up the project. So I have a piece of wood right here that I need to cut down to 10 inches long. This is already prepared. Uh, one of the things you want to do is make sure you put the masking on here first so that when you carve it, you can paint over it and then peel the masking off. So this is called Aura Mask. And it goes on fairly easy. I've got a lot of videos that explain it. But as you can see right here, it's simply putting the masking down. It has the adhesive back. And I'm using a scraper to just lightly press the aura mask down. Now, you want to make sure that whenever you're putting aura mask down, that you vacuum up the, the bare wood first and get it really, really clean. And then you press that aura mask down. Once it's down, then you take that scraper and run it over it several times to get it to press down really good all the way around. If you see any air bubbles in it, simply take a razor blade or something, just poke it to make a hole in the aura mask and press it down. So I'm gonna cut this down to 10 inches and then we're gonna set it up on the CNC router. Okay, one of the things I wanna do real quick is just sand off any burrs or, or, or uh, chips that the saw had left. And that's clean there. I am already clean over here almost. So just a little 220 grit sandpaper, cleaned it up quite nicely, that's it. So now what we're gonna do is lay this down on the machine right here. If you take a look here, I've mounted a couple of pieces of wood that will align my board right into there so it's already set up ready to go. I can carve name after name after name after name. If you want to get into business doing this, then you can actually get your machine somewhere where you can start whipping these out with the names and, and selling them. People will buy them just to watch the machine go. They'll say, can you do John? Can you do Larry? Can you do Sam? So we are going to now mount this clamp it to the table. So the clamp I'm using is a wedge style clamp that you probably haven't seen before, but it's super, super convenient. Where if you take a look at it, it's just a wedge that drives down and there's a screw on the back there. And I've got a bunch of holes in the spoil board. There's a dead on two inches apart that I've drilled with the lightning drill bit for IDC Woodcraft because I need precise holes. I have these pins. I'm gonna drop this, this thing right down like that. And as now it's on the spoil board, and I take my drill and impact it lightly the other way. And that's it. The project is now held down, ready to go. So now all I have to do now is zero out the machine and hit the go button. And once you get this set up, you can just punch these things out. One, two, three, four, five. So let's zero this thing out. So when I line this up, I literally just eyeballed the point of this 90 degree V-bit right along this line here, and I did it here too. And then I used my touch probe to set the top. And then what I did, because this masking has a little bit of thickness, I brought it over here, brought the machine down to Z0 that it had just created by using a probe, and came down another 0 0.01 so that I can compensate for the thickness of this material. And now all we have to do is simply turn the router on and press the start button.
All right, so we got this done, but I oversized it just a little bit because Julianne is almost off the edge, but that's okay. Uh, that's just what it is. We're taking it off, we're gonna paint it and put a clear coat on it and it'll be done. All right, let's go paint this thing. So now what we're going to do is peel away the aura mask. Now I can tell you I made a little mistake. I didn't spray a coat of clear coat on here first. And the reason we want to spray some clear coat on first is to seal up any pores in the wood. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. So we're going to take this aura mask and we're going to simply just peel it away. And I love the peeling process of aura mask. Just work along the bottom. You can see how quick and easy that really is. Just one, two, three, and within just a few seconds, a minute, if that, I've got almost everything taken off. And this is what I like to use for clear coat. It's Rust-Oleum Satin Clear Enamel. This is not something to use outside. I've already learned that lesson. It wears down pretty quick in the sun, but it works wonderful on the inside. I'll put a link for this down below as well. Let's spray this project. So now the Julianne project is done. Now you can see that I have a little bit of an error there. I just ran off the edge with the top of the J. But at the end of the day, people don't see that. When you're making something so personal as somebody's name, they are more thrilled by that than anything. And I'm gonna prove it to you. We're gonna take this to Juliana, we're gonna see what her reaction is. Before we do that, if you got something out of this video, you like the idea of something as simple as this, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you wanna know more about CNC routers and the design and how to just make simple stuff like this. And maybe consider buying your CNC router bits from IDC Woodcraft. I'll link IDC Woodcraft down below as well. All right, let's go see what Julianne does when she sees this. Hey, Julianne, mm -hmm. uh, can you stop for a second? I just mm -hmm. wanna ask you something. I just wonder what you thought about that. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what I tell you, it doesn't really matter. She has her own personal nameplate now. Here you go. Thank you. <laughs> if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Give Julianne a thumbs up. And have a great day, better tomorrow, and happy CNC. IDCwoodcraft.com.